Thanks for tuning into my YouTube channel. Today I would like to talk about the Z axis on the on my 3D printer, the Avajanium project. And uh, basically, my Z axis is made out of uh, well, obviously a thread, uh, some rods. But this very nice piece here is the one that I want to talk about today because it's an excellent way of uh, generating a, a linear actuator with a piece that is really. I mean, it came out of a linear actuator, but not the style that you would imagine. Um, wh one of the things that I like about this piece is not only that it has ball beatings, but also that it has threads, uh, threaded holes, which means that we can uh, bolt stuff into it. Very nice piece. Let me show you where it comes from so you can take advantage of this and all of the other uh, pieces that are crucial for uh, to make this uh, an easy to implement um, uh, linear actuator. Now, believe it or not, this linear actuator did not come from an actual threaded linear actuator. It came from pneumatic actuators. So I went ahead, uh, went to eBay and spent anywhere in between $150 and $200 to get these five units. And they're all very similar, different sizes, I imagine, uh, for different applications. But, you know, they can all be adapted into your z-axis for a 3d printer or a cnc machine and the beauty is that you know this big piece of aluminum has threaded rods so you can use them to bolt stuff into it and it also has this very nice base which you can use to align the whole assembly now clearly these rods these shafts are are too, too short so they're not gonna do we're gonna can them or i mean you can use them for something else but for for your for your actual project, we're going to reuse some other chaff. You can buy them on Magmaster or your local metal supply. Uh, ground chaff uh, of, the, of the same size. These here are half an inch. So all I have to do is get a big piece of half an inch um, chaff. And that would give me a, a longer linear actuator. And of course, I'm going to get rid of the, the actual pneumatic actuators. I, I don't need that. Uh, but that's how I was able to get a very nice linear actuator with lots of power and strength to it. All right, I have uh, screwed a few screws in the in the block. I'm actually missing a few units here. I believe these are, I thought they were 832s, but apparently they are 824s or something like that. I don't have any, uh, but these in here are 632. These are um, 38s, I believe. So as you can see, you can you can tie stuff to the sides. Um, I believe these are also the same eight. So you could do four in here, four in here, four in here, eight in here, eight in here. The flexibility is impressive. So very nice piece of aluminum. I wish somebody would sell them for I don't know, thirty or forty bucks. I think should be fine. Uh, with bolt beatings, of course, that would be an amazing piece to create, to easily create linear actuators. Then on the other side, we have the um, the base, which is where the rods were attached to. So you, you can use this on the bottom of the uh, linear actuator. And this will allow you to make sure that the rods are aligned properly. And you can place the bolt beating here. Very nice, very nice piece. Also a bunch of screws here that you can utilize. Very nice, very nice pieces. If you can get a few of these actuators, they will make your life easier.